Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video, we'll be looking at the fifth part of identification of bodily fluids, that is blood. In this video, we'll be learning about species identification of the biological fluid blood. So, up till now, what we have done is we have preliminary identified the stain as a blood. Then we confirm that particular identity of the particular stain is blood. Now, uh, what we have to do is we have to identify that particular blood or biological fluid is of human or of any other animal origin. How can we do this? We can do this with the help of species identification techniques. So let's understand species identification. So if a stain is identified as blood, now we have confirmed that particular stain is blood. Now what we have to do is we have to find its origin whether it is of human or origin or it is of animal origin or any other animal origin. The evidence can be tested to determine whether the blood is of human origin. Right? Species identification assays can be useful for screening to exclude or eliminate non-human samples. Now, if we are dealing with a particular uh, investigation where we encounter a blood stain which is not of human origin, is of no significance in the particular investigation, then we can eliminate that sample because it is not of significance for our investigation and it is unrelated to an investigation. So this can be a significance of species identification. Further, taking another case where the non-human samples, biological fluid is of significance, we can uh, confirm that particular animal or any other organism is involved in the criminal case or the investigation. So it will also point out to the path to our investigation where we can uh, include the non-human origin samples for the investigation of the particular case also. So this is another significance. Now these essays utilize anti-human and anti-animal antibodies. Now you must be familiar with this term antibodies to identify human and animal species respectively. Now firstly let's, let's understand what are antibodies and what are antigens. So anti, uh, let's understand what are antigens first. Antigens are usually foreign uh, entities or foreign substances. Uh, these are foreign substances which are present on the, which may be present on the cell surfaces or in the solution inside the cell, which are capable of eliciting an immune response in the body. And they are also capable of reacting with the antibodies. So, and now antibodies, these are usually, they are also called immunoglobulins, which are capable of reacting with the antigens to certain uh, antigen binding sites, which are very specific to the antigens. So now from here, you can understand that antibodies and antigens, they play a major role in the species identification procedures of biological fluid. And in this case, we are taking species identification to be blood. We have to identify the species of the blood stain or the blood sample that we have collected from the scene of crime. Let's learn in detail, in a bit detail. So, essays for species identification. I hope that antigen and antibodies are clear. I'm not going in much detail. I hope it's fine for you all. So, the species identification essays, they are usually of two types. Primary binding essay and the secondary binding essay. Primary binding is basically the uh, antigen antibody reactions are of two types the primary binding and the secondary binding reactions correct these assays species identification assays they are dependent on these antigen antibody binding reactions where in the primary reaction the single antigen and epitope of an antigen while the single antigen binding site of an antibody reacts to form an antigen antibody complex perfect while the secondary reaction the antigen antibody reaction takes place in the form of precipitation when the particular antigen is present on the cell surface. When a soluble antigen is present, in this case, we usually the agglutination based assays, and third will be the complement fixation. Basically, in our concern for this species identification test, usually do the precipitation based assays, which is a type of secondary bindings. So, this is very basic. So, let's um, get back again to the primary binding assays. Where usually the primary reaction between the antigen and antibody takes place. 
So in the primary binding assays, we usually use the immunochromatographic assays as well as another one which is ELISA. <coughs> You must be familiar with the, this term ELISA. This is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. It is a kind of primary binding assay which can be utilized for the species identification of drug. Similarly, the immunochromatographic assays. Uh, we'll be learning about all these in very much detail in the upcoming videos. So, for now, you can just remember that primary binding assays are usually ELISA and the immunochromatographic assays. The secondary binding assays, usually, I told you that. The precipitation based assays are used for the species identification and these are of the single immunodiffusion. Immunodiffusion techniques are usually used. We will be learning them all in detail. Don't worry. Second, single immunodiffusion, double immunodiffusion, then uh, immunoelectrophoretic techniques which involves uh, immunoelectrophoresis, crossed immunoelectrophoresis, counter immunoelectrophoresis and crossed over immunoelectrophoresis. So these techniques are very much important for confirming the identification of species assays. Let's move further. So before carrying out any of these species identification techniques, we have to prepare our sample. We cannot uh, just use the raw evidence without doing any sample preparation directly. So we have to prepare the sample first. How it should be prepared, let's learn about it. So, a sample can be prepared by cutting out a portion of the stain. If we have a physical evidence in the form of a stain, we have to cut that portion or we have to scrap it. Then there is, uh, when the stains are dried from the surface, then we have usually extracted with a small volume of saline. So, we have to extract that stain in the form of a solution. So, usually saline. 0.9% saline or buffer is used. For usually it is of PB, it is of PBS buffer is used, which is a phosphate based saline only. So these two solutions can be used to extract a biological sample. And this extraction usually occurs in the room temperature, 37 degrees Celsius normal temperature. Correct. And third point, most important point is control should also be included. Now what are controls? Controls are usually the reference samples or the known samples uh, identity is known that this particular stain is present this particular control samples are taken from the known source against the uh, which they examine us usually the forensic personals they compare the samples which are taken from the crime scene so these are usually done collected for comparison purposes with the original or uh, suspected stain controls can be of two types positive control and negative control positive control samples we know in this case we know that the particular stain is blood we are comparing it with the suspected stain similarly the negative controls that contains the absence of that particular stain in this case it is the blood so we know that the particular negative control sample does not contain blood so these are usually significant in the comparison purposes let's move further the immunochromatographic assays so let's first learn about the primary binding assays of identification of blood, species identification of blood and first one we will be studying about is the immunographic assays. Now let's split this term again into two parts. Immuno which is related to immunology as we are using antigen and antibody binding reactions here. So we are using this term immuno and chroma. Chroma means color, graphic, getting the results in the form of colored graphs not particularly real graphs. We carry out these tests in the form of strips where uh, vertical we get colored vertical lines which provide us positive results. Assays means examination. So immunochromatographic assays. Usually these assays are rapid, specific and sensitive which can be carried out both in the laboratory as well as the field test. We can use these tests in the crime scenes also. So basically in the case of blood, as we are dealing with the blood evidence, the antigen which is present in the human protein, which is human hemoglobin protein, we identify this and further again other identification is of the human glycophorin A protein, which is only present or only limited to human blood, which is identified so that we can confirm that this particular blood sample is of human origin. 
to human hemoglobin protein as well as human glycophorin A2. Another way of determining the species identification is through secondary binding assays, uh, which I told you previously. Uh, you see the um, flow chart, which is of single immu immunodiffusion methods and immunoelectrophoretic assays. So, in immunodiffusion, you carrying out single immunodiffusion, double immunodiffusion, and immunoelectrophoretic assay. Single immunodiffusion, it is also called radial immunodiffusion. We'll be studying in detail about this in the next video. Then, the second one is the double, which involves the ring assay as well as Usher Loney double diffusion. This method is very important as it is carried out in the laboratories. For the species identification, we learn this very thoroughly. So I hope that the particular brief introduction about the species identification techniques is clear to you all from this video. In the next video, we'll be discussing and learning these techniques in a bit more detail. So it is very much crystal clear to you all about the species identification essays that are usually carried out for the identification of particular stain to be of human origin or not. For this video, if you have any kind of doubt or feedback, you can comment in the uh, you can comment below and ask us. So we'll be meeting in the next video and learning about detail species identification techniques. I hope you all like this video. You can share it with your friends and uh, subscribe to this channel for more knowledgeable content related to forensic science. And thank you very much for joining us.